Hello everyone and welcome back to another GTA Online guide where today I'm going to be making a conclusive video on the best fighter jet in GTA Online since Smuggler's Run so let's get right to the guide shall we? So when I talk about the best jet in the game I mean a jet that if you want to take someone out and have air superiority in the server and have the best performing jet for dogfights with zero regard to how much the jet costs then we need to take a look at a few things. The weapons, the handling, the speed and finally the perks. I'll explain I'll explain the last one a little later. Anyways, there are four major contenders in the world of noob wrecking jets. There's the Laser, the Hydra, the Rogue and finally the Starling. For those of you wondering why these four jets, well, that's because they're the most notable in the world of dogfighting, at least from what you guys have been saying. All of them except the Starling have explosive cannons instead of those useless normal machine guns. They're all very fast and they're all very good at doing their job without many flaws if at all. The only exception to this being the Starling with its lack of explosive cannons, it does have to fight a little differently than the other three jets in this list but it makes up for the lack of explosive cannon through its other tricks that it has up its sleeve. So let's get right to the comparison. First of all, I tested the top speed of all the jets side by side because, you know, top speed can come in handy if you either want to chase down a rival jet or you need to retreat for any reason. Looking at them all side by side, we can clearly see that the Rogue easily outruns the other planes in this list, despite it being a propeller plane, which makes no sense, but okay. Second place goes to the Hydra and the Starling. Both of these jets seem to have pretty much the same top speed. Of course, that is when the Starling has its booster active, and finally, in last place, we have the Laser. So if you want to intercept people in the skies, then the Rogue is the aircraft to use. Anyways, moving on, I now test out the all-important horizontal turn speed of the aircraft. As you know, when you get into a dogfight, you're going to be doing a lot of turning in circles to try and outturn each other. Obviously, the faster and tighter that you can do this, the better off you'll be in a 1v1. Now to do this, I turn the planes in a horizontal circle using both the ailerons, elevator, as well as the rudder to get the most efficient turn that's possible in the plane. But it's important to know that the Starling, thanks to its weird boost mechanic, is able to turn much, much tighter than the rest of the aircraft when its booster is turned off. And the Rogue has a similar characteristic, utilising sharp bank turns as well as stall turns where you basically let the plane reach critical speed, whilst also turning allowing you to make sharper 90 degree or even full 180 turns for when you want to finish someone off. The Starling, thanks to its boost mechanic, allows you to sacrifice speed to favour handling, which gives the pilot more control over the fight as you will see later on. Anyways, besides that, overall the Laser and the Hydra are both able to turn at pretty much the same speed. So we'll just say that the Laser and the Hydra have very standard turning mechanics which don't have any tricks up their sleeves. Except for the Hydra which can use its VTOL mode to quickly turn themselves towards their opponent to aim their machine gun and finish them off. Hopefully. However, this can be risky, because not only does it let the Hydra turn quicker than all the other aircraft, but it also opens up the Hydra to a missile strike which they'll have very little chance of escaping. If you were paying attention to the backwards loop speed, the horizontal rudder turn circle and the aileron roll speeds, you'll see that the Starling was a little faster than all the other jets when it came to the vertical loop. In the rudder circle, the Rogue was much, much faster than the rest, and finally, in the aileron roll test, the Starling once again was a little bit faster than the rest. So basically what we've found from these tests is that the Rogue and the Starling are the current competitors for the gold medal for best fighter plane, with the Hydra trailing behind for third place. And with the laser not really offering much to the pilot besides the Hydra not being able to do a 90 degree vertical climb whereas the laser can, the laser, I think we can all agree, is kind of obsoleted by now. The laser's handling and acceleration are trumped by both the Rogue and the Starling, and the lack of any trick that one can use in the jet doesn't leave the pilot many choices should they find themselves in a fight with one. For those who are still arguing that the Hydra is still the big daddy, allow me to demonstrate how I can both use the Rogue and the Starling to give the Hydra pilot a rough time. First, I'll show off the Starling. By this point, I haven't even talked about the weapons in depth, so now's the perfect time to do that, I guess. The Starling is the only jet out of the four to feature a continuous fire rocket system, kinda like the Savage helicopter. Now, a lot of other jets like the Molotov and the Pyro feature this, but they don't offer the addition of the rocket boost system that the Starling has to offer, which I'm showing off now. It's allowing me to face my opponent a lot more than he is able to face me, and due to the constant barrage of rockets that I'm firing at my opponent, they're unable to 
to utilize the Hydra's counterattack of using the VTOL mode to quickly turn themselves around towards me and try and shoot me with their machine gun. If they did try to do that, a missile would most certainly hit them. So now that I have my opponent pinned down by a constant rocket barrage, it doesn't leave them many choices to attack back. It's not easy to run away due to the Starling's booster allowing it a higher top speed, it can't exactly turn around because of the Starling's superior cornering, and it can't use the VTOL mode to counterattack because of all the missiles that are following it. The only downside to the Starling is that, while it's all well and good firing rocket after rocket to keep it pinned down, the Starling doesn't really offer anything to finish the opponent off, making the Starling more of a deterrent than an actual weapon. Perhaps when used as part of a group, the Starling can be one incredibly useful useful machine on the battlefield. The Starling could be used to keep opponents pinned down while their teammates, preferably in rogues, can finish them off. Speaking of rogue, let's talk about the rogue. The rogue is just a monster. As you can see, it doesn't take much effort to turn the thing in the right direction and offer a quick blast from the auto cannons. Using its basic missile fire system, I can deter the Hydra pilot from utilizing their VTOL turn to counterattack at least while there's a missile following them, so I can keep the Hydra from turning on myself while preparing myself to go in for the kill with the machine cannon. The pilot that I happen to be fighting in this video is very good at what they do, but due to the aircraft that he's in, and the one that I'm using, he can't really do much and I just go straight for the kill. Oh yeah, before I forget, did I mention that both the Starling and the Rogue feature plane armor, allowing them to survive a little more damage than the Hydra and the laser? They have access to bombs, and finally, they have countermeasures, so if the worst happens, then there's always countermeasures that the pilot can utilize. That is, if they're unfortunate enough to be in such a position, but that's unlikely because these things are just so good. All in all, if you want to absolutely wreck the noobs in a free lobby server, grab yourself a rogue and hit the skies, but at the same time, it would be pretty handy to have the Starling by its side to fight alongside it, for the reason that I just mentioned. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments, and hey! If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the Pyron Gaming channel for loads more videos coming to you very soon. See you around, everyone.